What's going on guys, RBG here bringing you another update on Marvel Spider-Man 2. It's been a year since Sony dropped the announcement trailer and we still haven't gotten any follow up details on this highly anticipated sequel. Which is a little bit weird, but it's reassuring nonetheless. Because this means Insomniac has all hands on deck and are more focused than ever on bringing us a complete product. So that's cool. With that said, there are still those fans who are disappointed in how quiet the marketing team has been for it, but it looks like that's about to change and we have a lot to go over so stay tuned. Now before we get started on the video, I gotta give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, TubeBuddy. As a successful YouTube user, I often get questions asking what I use to get my videos tons of views, and the answer to that is TubeBuddy. This thing has helped me take my channel to the next level in ways I never imagined. It's a browser extension that helps new and experienced YouTubers grow fast and optimize their channels. I've been using this extension for years and it's constantly getting updated with new features, like the SEO tool that helps me come up with the perfect title, description, and tags to get more people to click on my videos. It even provides you with analytics besides your videos to see how much traffic your video is generating from various social media sites. The extension is absolutely free, but as a special offer, we're giving a 50% discount for channels that have less than a thousand subscribers that purchase the Pro Upgrade. All you have to do is enter in the code RISINGSTARBUDDY. So if you're interested in starting a YouTube channel or taking your content to the next level, download the extension now. You can do so by clicking on this link that will be provided in the description of this video. But yeah guys, it seems like Marvel Spider-Man 2 is about to go into a marketing frenzy. Some of you may have not noticed this, but Sony and Marvel have kinda already started their campaign, or at least a leaker has done that for them. Now usually this is something that a lot of people don't agree with since they prefer the actual source to begin their promotions when they're ready, but things have been a little slow compared to how the first Marvel Spider-Man was promoted shortly after its announcement trailer. I mean, don't get me wrong, it took a year to get a follow-up trailer, but it was a year right on the dot. Like we're talking like the first year anniversary. The announcement trailer dropped on June the 13th, 2016, and the second trailer would drop on June 13th, 2017, which was right on the day the first trailer turned a year old. And mind you, this was the actual gameplay reveal trailer, so we were expecting to get a similar rollout for Marvel Spider-Man 2. Given how there has already been a trailer showcasing how the game looked in engine as opposed to the CG cinematic trailer we got with the Wolverine game, this made us confident that we'd see the new mechanics in Soundac has been cooking up in the lab. Now with that said, I think it's important to point out that almost all of those trailers for Marvel Spider-Man 1 were revealed during Sony's E3 panel, and as you know, they don't necessarily like to share the spotlight with other competitors anymore and would rather showcase their titles on their own events such as PlayStation Showcase. But even with those exclusive events, Marvel Spider-Man 2 has yet to be seen. The first trailer was released on September 9th of last year, and the only thing being aired on that annual release day was this year's 2022 Marvel Game Showcase. It aired on September the 9th, and many including myself were suggesting that it would be the perfect day and event to showcase the gameplay trailer for Marvel Spider-Man 2. But unfortunately, that theory fell flat on its face because, once again, the game was nowhere to be found. And this undoubtedly frustrated a lot of fans including myself, because I usually try to report these things to you guys when I'm 100% sure they're gonna happen. But for whatever reason, Sony opted not to do what they usually do and release an annual trailer. I originally assumed that it was because they already had a lot going on in regards to Spider-Man. Like, they were already running off the hype of the PC announcement for Marvel Spider-Man 1, which has received rave reviews from players who are just now getting a chance to experience the game at the highest settings possible. And they recently announced a PC port for Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, so one would assume they just don't want to flood us with too much of the webhead. But apparently, we were in fact gonna get something last month. That's right, Sony was actually planning on dropping a big trailer for Marvel Spider-Man 2 during their PlayStation Showcase in October. But that plan and the overall event was scrapped. Allegedly, it has something to do with Microsoft's attempt to buy out Activision or something along those lines. Whatever the case may be, they decided to push the event back to an undisclosed date, which is a bummer because you already know, whatever they had in store for us would have been amazing, no pun intended. But things aren't all that bad because we've been able to get new information in the form of these sick looking variant covers. A little over a month ago, we got our first illustrated look at the new advanced suit for Marvel Spider-Man 2. It features Spider-Man essentially rising from the grave. And if you guys are a big comic book buff, this art might remind you of the resurrection cover from Kraven's Last Hunt. 
Spoiler alert to those who haven't read this story. In this particular run, Kraven finally succeeds in his mission of killing Spider-Man. After shooting Spidey down, he buries the web slinger and dons the mantle to prove that he's the superior Spider-Man. But Spider-Man revives from the effects of Kraven's tranquilizer dart and digs his way out of the grave, which led to this popular art cover. As you're all aware, Kraven will be one of the villains featured in Marvel Spider-Man 2. And this is most likely why Marvel and Sony opted to re-illustrate this cover from a series centered around Kraven the Hunter. Given how well the story writers have adapted these characters into their universe, it wouldn't be a stretch to get something similar to Kraven's last hunt in Marvel Spider-Man 2. If anything, it seems like all of these awesome variant covers will be giving out hints to what we might see in the story. Speaking of which, I want to move on and talk about the next variant cover we got featuring not only a new look at the updated event suit, but a new look at Peter Parker's new face model who also seems to have been updated, or should I say tweaked. Unless you've been living under Patrick Starr's basement, then you'd know that Insomniac Games has received their fair share of backlash since migrating over to next gen. With that big move came some big changes, one of which was a big cosmetic change to Peter Parker's face. This decision was made to take advantage of the PS5 hardware and get a better facial performance according to them. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm still not too keen on this decision. If it were me, I would've just called the original face model to come in and do some updated facial scans. The guy just looked like an older experienced version of Peter Parker, but the new guy looks like a Peter Parker who's new to the crime fighting game. I'd even go so far as to say he looks about the same age as Miles, if not younger than his web slinging protege. But hey, he's growing on me, man. Like, one of the things I didn't like about him is the hairstyle that looked like it came out of a create a character simulator. But it looks like Insomniac is gonna give him a new do. And this isn't really anything new when it comes to these characters. Like, we've seen this done with Miles Morales, where he goes from having a mild curl in the first game and by the time his solo game rolls around, he has a more trimmed and lined up haircut, which I think fits him better. In the case of this newer version of Peter, he used to have this swooped over hair that always stuck out like a sore thumb compared to their original hairstyle. I don't know, it's just something very anime-ish about it. Like, it looked like they got square Enix to make his hair, but this time around, he's gonna have an updated hairstyle. The hair looks more pronounced, especially in the front if you look at the cover. It looks like it goes better with his face. And guys, I'm just telling you now, this new face model is gonna look 10 times better than it did during its initial debut. I mean, I think all of them are gonna look better, but this one in particular is gonna greatly improve thanks to the PS5 hardware. We're talking more expressions, all the works. Now, in regards to the variant cover as a whole, it looks to be inspired after the 2008 comic series with great power. The story takes place between the radioactive spider bite and Uncle Ben's death, so hopefully this is a little clue that suggests that Insomniac will at least give us a flashback showcasing Peter's Spider-Man origin. But moving on, I want to analyze one of my absolute faves. This one right here, which is a beautiful homage to the classic spectacular Spider-Man Marvel Treasury Edition. What I love about this one is that it gives a better look at the upgraded advanced suit. Like you can see all the new armor pieces, and I'm digging the parts of the shoes. All of it looks improved, but yet it retains most of what we loved about the first advanced suit. It's not trying to be too different, it's doing just enough to let you know it's new and improved. The red doesn't have that orange hue to it, and the blue just looks right. Now, in regards to the actual subject matter from this source material it's based off of, and this is a major one if the devs are actually alluding to what I think they are, the debut of their version of Green Goblin. In my personal opinion, I think it's a bit too early to pull the trigger on this, but they've already laid out some of the groundwork for his introduction. All of the Green Goblin's gear can be seen in Norman Osborn's office in the first game. And what's not to say that green colored liquid he was housing Harry and the symbiote in could be that classic Green Goblin juice. I guess we'll just have to wait and see for ourselves. Now, the last variant cover looks to be a reference to The Amazing Spider-Man issue 100. It features some of Spider-Man's Rose Gallery as well as some of his loved ones in black and white. And if you look closely, it has the words The Spider or The Man. This basically sums up Peter's struggle to balance his personal life with his epic and tumultuous superhero life. He creates a serum that will strip him of his spider powers. He then takes the serum which causes him to black out and have dreams about his early days as Spider-Man and how it's affected his personal life. After waking up from the nostalgic dream, he realizes that he wants to continue being the webhead and he regrets that he even took the serum, only to discover that he has grown an additional four arms. Now, if you were to tell me that this scenario would be in Marvel Spider-Man 2 before it was announced, I'd just say it's too far-fetched. Insomniac's Peter Parker looks to be having a great time being Spider-Man 
man and mentoring Miles Morales as his partner and potential successor. But on the flip side, we see that Venom will be a huge component to this new entry, and from the looks of it, he looks to bring on a darker atmosphere than the first game story. I'm pretty sure Venom's gonna make Peter's life a living hell and go out of his way to hurt the ones Peter loves. Also keep in mind that Pete still might be hurting over the loss of Aunt May. We haven't necessarily seen how he's dealing with that internally and this could be a contributing factor of him throwing away the Spider-Man costume. Anyways guys, just want to say that you should take these theories with a small pinch of salt. We don't necessarily know what the story of Marvel Spider-Man 2 will entail. For all we know, these variant covers could just be simple nods to some of the classic comics. Whatever the case may be, it just feels good to see the marketing team at work. But with all that said, I want to know what you guys think about all of this. Do you like these new variant covers? And do you think they could be throwing out hints on what we could possibly see in Marvel Spider-Man 2? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. But if you really enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you shared it with all your friends and family members on social media. Sharing is caring. But this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.